grab by the handles and you still won't feel it. Great. And action. I am an extremely nostalgic and melancholic person and I love this idea of how seeing how how far that could take you uh, when exploring romance and so the Blue Jay is essentially the story of two ex high school sweethearts who haven't seen each other for over 20 years and randomly they end up back at their small hometown on the same day and um, they end up kind of spending some time together and get a little caught up in that time warp that often happens which is sort of making you question whether uh, is this a real attraction or is it just nostalgia at work basically see what I did every there? single relationship I've ever had yeah. <laughs> like, is this real or is this based is this on real some or a, phantom moment that, or, am I just or am I just trying to relive 16 candles yeah. over and over again yes. Mark knew what kind of story he wanted to make and, and, and we loved it and we all you know got behind that and you know found any way we could to just supplement Mark's vision uh, so I sent out a document that was not even two pages and I, and I called Sarah, who I knew a little bit socially, and I was like, do you want to do this movie? And I th think there was a part of me that was like, well, it's not really a movie. It's kind of like a page and a half document. I didn't think and, that uh, at all. I was like, wait, I've never done anything like this yeah. before. So I was ready to jump in. And we kind of built the story together. We went in with a treatment. We had creative meetings with the creative producing team, with the director and the actors and all kind of sat around talking about not just where we wanted the film to go and where we wanted the characters to go, but we talked a lot about our life experiences and how these moments made us feel and, and our personal interactions. It's all about being part of something that's actually very alive in front of you. Um, it's not like every moment is a mystery, but it does feel like this living thing that everyone is putting their hands into. I play a guy named Jim. Jim had the love of his life in high school, and I think he, yeah. I mean, look at it. Look at that. Look at, it. Look at all that stuff. <laughs> and I think he thought um, it was going to go really well, and it crashed on him. It didn't work out. Um, and he's been having a little bit of a hard time. He's got a little bit of a crying problem, <laughs> which I think is just is wonderful. When he sees Amanda, I think a lot of it comes flooding back for him. And um, he is, of course, extremely taken with her, um, but is it because of who she is now? Is it because of who she represented for his past? I mean, I don't know. You're just rooting for the guy from the very beginning because you know he's just one of the best damn people who's ever lived, and he's got so much passion. Something happened to him. You know he was done wrong by fate. Amanda is Jim in denial. She's a very strong woman, but she's also stubborn, and she's uh, committed to making life work. I play Amanda, and I was in love with Jim when I was a youngster, and I haven't seen him in a very long time. I am now married. Something had happened between Jim and myself that left things feeling a little bit unfinished. And so when we see each other, it isn't just the sort of, you know, d dissolving into nostalgia and immediate it, it kind isn't of, hit me on Facebook yeah hit, hit me up on Facebook yeah it, it wasn't an immediate kind of let's go hang out and spend yeah. the day together it's so fun and easy breezy it was fraught it was incredible working with Sarah um, for whatever chaos we would have in a day or whatever kind of peace in a day whatever kind of factors she was working with to watch her go from walking across the room talking about something having nothing to do with the film to completely dropping into a scene. Um, it was beyond pro, it was like watching someone truly living their mission in life. There were many times when she would reach me completely emotionally with what she was bringing and I, knowing what she was doing 10 minutes previous would really blow my mind. I would stare at the monitor with my jaw wide open or with a big smile or with tears in my eyes. I mean, that woman can bring it and she is badass. She brought a lot to the table and she brought a lot out in Mark and I think Mark did the same for her. As somebody who's worked with Mark quite a bit, I saw him bring some of his strongest performances that I've seen of his career. I learned a ton working with, with Mark and Sarah and um, yeah, the saddest thing was seeing how many great things are gonna be difficult to squeeze into the movie. Uh, we ended up bringing on the director, Alex Lehman, who we had worked with on the documentary, Asperger's Are Us, and it just felt like a perfect collaboration for a first-time director to come in. It was the first time I've ever worked with 
uh, a combo where we had the director, who was also the DP, and he had a really specific vision that he brought to the table that matched what Mark wanted for this film. To be a creative producer for someone like Alex is a great opportunity to see someone um, work really hard, bring a lot of his expertise as a DP to it, and then also opening as a as a director and bring it to kind of a new genre that I'm not aware that he had hit before. I think we were about 13 or 14 people all in cast and crew on this film. So a lot of hats were worn by a lot of people. And everybody on our crew is a filmmaker in their own right. Even the you know woman who cooks us food is a filmmaker. So everybody put in their own thoughts and their own feelings and helped create this wonderful vibe that very much translated onto the screen. I know what I wanted the spirit of the film to be from when I started it, and I wanted it to feel the way you feel when you go home for the holidays and you're looking through your room and your closet and you're finding old letters and old pictures and you're remembering who you thought you were going to be and you're reckoning with who you are now and it's never the same thing. And sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad, yeah. but it always makes you feel so deeply and it makes you capable of maybe doing some things and making some decisions you wouldn't normally make. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this day is about for Jim and Amanda. All of us ended up finding ourselves in different moments, telling stories about our first love and going back to different times and places that I think a lot of us hadn't thought about in years, sharing stories with each other that we never had before. Some of us have known each other for years and we're telling these stories for the first time. I ended up talking about my first love and it's something I don't think I've talked about in years. And it was this amazing weird therapy while watching the scenes and then also while cameras were not rolling as we were sharing. Tell everybody what you want them to feel when they watch the movie. Go ahead, look in the camera. I want... Tell them, tell them what you want to happen. Hi everyone. I really hope... <laughs> I really hope that this movie makes you feel like a kid again, like your younger self in a way. Being able to get in touch with that part of you that maybe forgotten and sort of get back in touch with the innocence and emotional immediacy of your you know the real immediate feeling of, of your emotions that was certainly a part of my life when I was a younger yeah. person I think you know and kind of now too and kind of now yeah. too when yeah. you get older you try to yeah. rein it in but it doesn't always work so well I would be really really happy if people walked out of the movie theater, I'm not looking down the lens like you told because, me. It because because watch, watch, I'm that. pulling on my beard. Oh, you're gonna do a thing and then, and you're gonna look and right then I'm gonna lay it in, in a right there. <laughs> Everybody, you ready? I'm gonna pull it down, Johnson. Okay. I, I I would be very happy if when people left the movie theater, they said, you know, it has that stuff that like the Notebook and the Bridges of Madison County has, but it also like did it with a little bit of integrity. That would be the sweet spot. That would spot. be the sweet spot. Yes, I, I'll say this in all honesty. I think there's a chance that. Uh, this being probably the most earnest movie I've tried to make ever, um, I think there's a chance that this movie will be a kind of movie where some people look and they say, oh my gosh, they're really going for it. And then I think there's a chance that some people will look at this and say, that's exactly how I feel when I go home. And they, they really captured something. Captured something. Yeah. Jury's out, folks. Jury's out. <laughs> we will see. You didn't look down the barrel. When I looked at you, you're my barrel. <laughs> Throw that pipe in. <laughs> Lay it. Pipe. Lay it nope. down. Nope. Nope. Don't, don't say that. Don't do it.